Hi everyone. Um, I am back a little early. I'm gonna take my glass off. I'm getting used to this new whole bifocal thingy because I'm blind as a bat. Um, I am back, not for my cross stitching, but this is for my quilting. I know I've been telling everybody I'm gonna bring this to you, and I'm gonna bring it to you and bring it to you, and I haven't been doing so. So, hi, my name is Carrie. I am a floss tuber. My bacon's in the oven multitasking it's what I do best um, and I keep saying that I'm going to bring you my crop or my my quilting because I've been quilting for a really long time and I need a way for myself to be held accountable for how many whips I have there too because trust me I don't just have whips from cross stitch I have whips from every project that I do so um, I figured I would start my own quilt tube. I couldn't think of anything else better than that. And I don't know if there's any, I'm sure there's others out there. Other people do their videos with, um, in with their cross stitching, but I have so much. And then I'm sure there's people out there who don't want to watch my quilting stuff that do cross stitching. And if you do, <laughs> we are best friends. <laughs> Um, with that being said, I figured I found this little thing um, on the internet that talked about quilters and like how long you've done things. So um, I'm going to start off with, I am a self-taught quilter. I, I have, I can honestly say this is really, really, really bad. But um, man, when I dive into things, I dive in head first. And when I first started quilting, I had a sewing machine from Walmart that I purchased when my girls were little. That sewing machine is no longer with me. Um, I actually gave it to one of my daughters so that they could actually sew and do what they needed to do. But with that being said, um, I should say this is going to be a pretty much a quilter's whip parade where I'm at with my projects, where I want to be with my projects in 2024, and where that actually might fit into my time. Because right now, yeah, so one of the questions is, what is my favorite guilty pleasure? <laughs> Buying fabric and hiding it from my husband. <laughs> I love buying fabric. I love smelling it. I love touching it. I love sewing with it. I don't necessarily like cutting it up. If I find a beautiful fabric that I absolutely love, I don't like to cut it up. But my guilty pleasure is totally buying fabric. Um, my favorite quilting tool is the next question, and I wish I kind of would have brought it with me, but I, I did not. Um, it's probably my cutter. Like, I don't necessarily like cutting fabric, but I I, I don't know. That is my, when it's got a new blade on it, that is my favorite, favorite thing to use. Um, what do you wish you had invented? Hell, that purple thing. I don't know. I don't know if you... I'll show you what it looks like, but that little purple thing is like, everyone has one. It's a neat tool to have. Um, maybe I could stay home and sew all day. That would be great. Um, what was your worst quilting disaster and where were you able to fix it? Oh my gosh. I didn't fix it. I had some phenomenal, phenomenal friends in the quilting industry when I first started. Um, I don't do anything small. If you've seen my floss tubes, you probably already know this. Um, I just don't normally do smalls. I just jump head first in and I did a quilt for my mother-in-law. Um, she's no longer with us, but I can show you what it looks like mm -hmm, on whatever side. And somehow the center of that quilt was just all wonky. And when I mean wonky, when I brought it to the quilter, that Peggy, I, I, you'll never watch this, but I love you. She is one of the, in my opinion, um, most amazing quilters. She's quilted several of my quilts, and I don't even know who fixed it, but I was in the quilt guild up there. It was my first quilt guild, and they fixed it. She quilted it, and my mother-in-law loved it. So um, I really appreciate her for that. That was probably the best thing um, if you could watch anyone quilt, who would it be? 
Hmm. I don't know. Judy Nymar, that would be cool. Um, even though I know people who know her, which is kind of a, a, an amazing thing. Um, just because all her quilts are so amazing. I've done a, quite a few of them. Um, not as hard as you would think, so if that's the case. Um, Elizabeth McKenna. I would love to actually quilt with her. Or not actually quilt, or just do any of her. I'd love, I'd love that. Because um, that actually scares me more than Judy's quilts do, which is... They're bigger, but, and I do have probably all of the above. Um, if I wasn't a quilter, what would you do? I think that's, I don't, can't imagine me not being a quilter, so I guess that's not going to even be an answer. Um, tell us something about yourself that might surprise you. If some of you see my floss tubes, nothing's going to surprise you. I love photography. Not gonna surprise anybody. Um, I like to tromp in the woods and look for Bigfoot. That might be probably one of the very few things that other people would be like, whoa, um, love me some Bigfoot. And yes, I do actively go out and, and search for this elusive person, thing, creature. I do, I love it. My favorite curse word, biscuit eating basketball player. <laughs> Um, I started saying that when my children were younger because I was in the military for 21 years and cursing just happens to be probably, yeah, that's a word that, and so since I couldn't say other curse words, biscuit eating basketball player happened to be something that I made up and I say it all the time. So yeah, son of a biscuit eating basketball player is probably a really great great one but I do cuss probably way too much while sewing while stitching frogging there's another F word that goes with that mm -hmm. so anyway um, what's my favorite color my favorite color believe it or not is pink don't know why but I love pink um, I do love all colors I tend to my color scheme or my color background is fall autumn colors. Lo I don't know why I like browns. Not really necessarily browns. It is more like, and I really dislike orange. So I don't know where that goes, but it is like the autumn fall colors. I don't like them individually, but man, when you put them together, they make a stunning quilt. Um, one of the one of the things that I suck at is picking fabrics for quilts. So I often say hey can someone help me with this or can someone help me with this um but with all my questions out of the way if there's any questions y'all ever want to ask me go right ahead i'm pretty much an open book um but i'm gonna get started on this whip parade of and if anyone doesn't know what a whip is a whip is a work in progress i have several of those and in the quilting world the work in progress is in several, st I put mine in several stages. My quilts are in the cutting stage, the sewing stage, the quilting stage, the binding stage, and I think that's pretty much it. Because once you bind it, you're done. So with that being said, let's get to the whip parade. All right, I'm back. My bacon was complete, and of course I had to eat some of it. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Um, so what I'm going to do is start off with, um, I have a ton of my whips, but I have to keep them like all semi-organized. This is going to get a little loud. So I have an obsession with two and a half inch strips, five and a half, all the, all that, because they, they tend to make some extremely, really, really easy, I don't say easy, they just make really beautiful quilts and usually all the patterns that are in it are gorgeous. So this is kind of already put together. Um, and I'm sorry, because that paper, the reasons why I have paper on here is because I want to quilt this. And if I, and this is my, I think as a quilter, this is my hardest thing, is trying to figure out a design to put on it that I'm going to be happy with. If I just give it to the, the, the quilter, they're, it's free reign. They can do whatever they want. I 
actually have pretty good, the ones that I've used, I have faith in them for making those decisions and I give them high honors because I can't, it's, I'm having a hard time with it. So, hold on. So see, I have the paper. And I've been making my own designs on here. And if you iron it on and quilt it, which if you're already a quilter, you know this. But if you're not, and you want to learn, these are just some tips and tricks. If you iron on, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's wax paper, it actually sticks to your fabric. So you can actually quilt with it. And it's almost like doing a paper piecing pattern and you can draw your pattern on it, quilt it, rip it off, and you're quilted. So it is such an easy way of actually trying to fit a design. You can see it in the whole nine yards. So this was one of those two and a half inch um, quilt pieces, or quilt rolls, jelly rolls. And I was gifted, oh shit, I almost stuck myself with a needle because I had this pinned down. I was gifted this, the V, the braid pattern, like a really long time ago. I still have it in the whole nine yards. And so what I did was I, this is actually out of leftovers. This was made out of the leftover, which you'll see the actual wall hanging or lap quilt. Um, but this was made out of the leftovers of that quilt. I don't even know you can see it. So, um, including the only thing that I did was purchased the background fabric and I used all the rest of it. I literally had this much left after doing that. So I did a, a runner with it. I pinned it all down. I love these colors. These colors are fun. They're amazing. And then I purchased this as the background to get that done. So once I can actually get this quilted and binded, I will do the same binding. I just figured it would actually kind of match some of the fabric up front and it would work out really well. So the binding will be the same as the back. I already have it cut and ready to rock. I just need to actually physically figure out how I'm going to um, get that done. So the next quilt I did for my daughter way back, I mean, this was a really long time ago. She's, yeah, anyway, it was a really long time ago. So this is the quilt that I made for her. There is no pattern for this quilt. I just saw something similar and said, oh, I can do that. Lo and behold, it's off, it's weird, and it's okay, right? It doesn't matter. So for the quilt, so here is the quilt in person. This is just made out of like regular, I mean, I had this fabric in my stash. So this is a stash quilt, but my daughter is purple. She loves purple. Um, so with the problem of coming from your stash is now I need to have, figure out how to fix this because I, I think I'm gonna put a border on it. Um, so I purchased some fabric at several different craft stores. This fabric similar to, I love that these colors are actually coming up. It's only blues that really do that. So this fabric is similar to this one. So I was like, I think I did a really good job. It's probably even the same fabric. It's perfect. Um, and then I picked another fabric to do an accent. And I have not found this dark fabric yet. Um, I might not even ever find it, but I've looked everywhere and it's just really not a fabric that I found. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out some way to do a border on this and this is her backing. Her nickname was Bubbles. She's going to love this. So it's on my list. Will I figure out what I'm going to do with it this year? Probably not. Um, I just, my brain power isn't there for that. So there's that. Another quilt that I have done, I'm going to show you a photo of it because it's, enormous. It's massive. I forgot the name of the pattern, so I'll put that right there because I forget. And um, I paper pieced this when I was in Alaska. So this quilt's been done. The quilt top has been done for hmm, a while. Six, six years. And um, I'd like to get it quilted. It will most likely get quilted this year. I've already done the back. So this is going to be the back of that quilt. I have pieced both of these fabrics together. And the reasons why this has puppy prints on it is because I started this quilt literally four days before we lost our puppy. And I, I did not sew on this quilt for probably two months. 
I didn't even really go in my sewing room for like a couple months. Sometimes just different things have a way of messing with you, you know? So whether there's a death in the family, and trust me, my puppy was part of the family. He was 13. He was a coon hound. And it was just something that we couldn't fix or help out with. So we unfortunately had to put him down. But I called this quilt Tucker's Journey. Um, I was so, I came back to my craft room. I was sewing on it one day. And the pattern, which I'll show you again, uh, it looks like a galaxy. And I, my husband was just, in, happened to be in there too. And um, I said, I'm naming this quilt Tucker's Journey. And he was kind of surprised by that. So now we'll never get rid of it. It is an odd looking quilt, but this quilt looks like the galaxies. I feel like he's always watching over us. Um, hence the reasons why I pieced this background fabric to remind us of him. And so this will go on that. It's a ton, it's thick, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it's actually too long, so I have to cut it. I've got to figure out a few things for this quilt. Um, and my floss tubers don't know this yet, but I have a conditional job offer, so we won't be here, I don't know when. I, it's conditional, so I don't want to put out too much out there, but we do have a conditional, I have a conditional job offer um, in Michigan, so we will be moving there some time between now and, and May. Our lease is up in May here, so um, that's a bonus. So I'm going to pause again and grab some more. All oh, right, we're back. Um, so the next one I'm going to show you, I have it right here on my left, but I'm also going to show you a picture of it because I can't, doing cross stitch is a little bit easier in my opinion than doing quilts because they're in various stages. Some of them I'm going to be able to show you because they're, like I said, in various stages. Others are pretty much almost ready to go minus there's a few things I have to do. So. I have been obsessed with people doing the window panes quilts, so I can just show you bits and pieces. I'm going to show you what it looks like all together, and then kind of just show you just, this is where I'm at with this. So I'll show you again because it'll be a lot easier to see it that way, I'll throw that one on the floor if the cat doesn't get to it. So I need to figure out what to do with this. Obviously it's complete pretty much and I think I'm gonna put like one more border on it and back it and quilt it I may not do much when it comes to quilting this I may just do stitch in the ditch which if you don't understand what that is stitching in the ditch is literally stitching where you've sewn which could be probably the easiest way for me to put this quilt together and then put some back tags on it and I don't even know if I'll keep it um, I think it's cute but I don't know if it's something that I'll that I'll actually keep so that's one of them and then the next thing is so if you are a quilter and you want to challenge yourself go check it out the quilting B B O M on Facebook um, I was an admin at one point in time um, I started out this is actually something that I started out doing there they do lots of fun things they do um, a Christmas um, secret Santa every year uh, I've been pretty much a part of it almost since it started and absolutely love doing it. But what I started doing and how I really got better at my quilting, and I didn't even know what blocks of the month were back then. But they came out with this. I'm telling you, my children say I want to pull this back a little bit and bring it down. My children say I can make ugly fabric look good. And kind of after seeing some of these blocks, I, don't, I understand what they're doing with it. So this is one of the blocks. I, this is just fabric that I had. So I actually just said, okay, I'm going to start stitching. I'm going to start doing this. This is another block. Different variations of things. They are not bad, mind you. Another block. So now I'm going to try to figure out how to put these blocks together and make a quilt out of them because I have them all and I haven't finished it. So some of these don't do very well when it comes to contrast, but I like them. This one was cool. Sorry, I'm looking down to grab the and then I changed some colors. I don't know if I ran out of colors, but I added the blue. Um, I just learned a lot with this one. So this one was kind of cool. And then I changed it to a green because why not add some color to it? 
So some of these I did extra blocks. I did another one of this one and did a green variation to it. So if you know of a pattern that would work out really well with this, let me know because I would love to stitch this sucker up. Quilt it with just an all-around quilt pattern and be done with it. I mean, I don't mind the quilt blocks. There's just a lots of different variations. This one I like a lot. I actually created this one later on for um, or recreated something like that for another part of a block. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen quilt blocks. That makes a phenomenal quilt, I'm assuming. And if I have to make more, guess what? Y'all will laugh at me. I did get rid of all my stash at one point in time, but I still have pretty much enough fabric to make some more. So, if I have to, I can make more. There's that. So when I first started getting into quilting, I stopped by a yard sale and, un and had this, I mean, she had like four bins of fabric and she gave them to me for five bucks. And in that bin of fabric, I found a whole bunch of these hearts that were already cut out and ready to rock. So I took the same fabric that I bought and I appliqued them to just a quilt because I might have to show you, get a picture of this one too. But So all this fabric was that fabric that was in the bin and all I did was applique the hearts to, or stitched around them. I just did a, a blanket stitch all the way around and I can show you what it looks like. So technically the only thing I have to do on that one is find some backing, quilt it, and she's done. Well, bind it and she's done but she's still on my whips. Um, this next piece that I want to show you, I'm going to have to show you a picture of it because it is already completed. It is quilt top. It came out of um, Quilters World magazine. Um, I don't have the magazine no more. I got rid of almost everything I own. Um, again, remember I was telling you I don't like oranges, don't like browns, but look at her. She's pretty, ain't she? I absolutely love this quilt. You can see all the stitching I did on it when I actually appliqued them on. Um, and then I did the linings on the inside with the satin stitch. I love this, this is a beautiful quilt. Again, I need to put backing on. I need to quilt it. I need to finish it. So do you remember the braided table runner I was telling you about? Well, here is the actual, I'm not gonna be able to, show, I'm gonna show you a picture of the whole thing. But here is what I did with some of this, as you can see. Get some threads out of here. I actually did a border on it. And you wouldn't believe what I got to do with this one. I got to quilt the damn thing. You see a theme here? I see a theme here. <laughs> so this quilt is, I'm sorry, I'm itchy nose, is, I absolutely love this quilt. I won't get rid of this quilt, um, whether I make it a laptop hang it in my house, do whatever I'm going to do with it. I absolutely love this quilt and I do love the table runner. So they will most likely just stay in the house. Um, I absolutely love them both. I love the color choices that are in there. I don't know. Again, the two and a half inch strips, you kind of can't beat it. If you fall in love with what you're looking at, then you really need to get it. So I know I already mentioned the quilting BOM once. You're going to hear a theme here because I was part of the group. So I, did a lot. We did it in exchange. These were like photographic exchanges. And literally, I have thousands, of, I don't say thousands, I have a lot of pieces from different quilters and they did different things. So I, again, need to figure out what I'm going to do with all my little pieces. There's a deer. Hold on. Perfect. Isn't he cute? I love him. So I've got a monkey. I've got a bear, which totally works for me if you know if y'all didn't know that an eagle a doggy bone a puppy a lighthouse which I got married in a lighthouse not this one but I got married in a lighthouse little known fact and if this isn't perfect for me I didn't realize it back then because I wasn't cross stitching as much but this is perfect for me a buttons who doesn't love buttons zippers which you'll see in a second and 
and then some more buttons. And then I got some extras. Someone gave me some extras. I'm not sure if they just weren't done, then that's totally okay because I can use them. I will use them. If especially, here's an extra piece. It's a little kitty cat. Another bear. Some probably extra pieces that they sent. I cut my own out because I also had to send a bunch out to other people. A squirrel. A bee and a raccoon. Another raccoon. Come on. An owl. If y'all didn't know, now you know. Owls. Um, I did. I sent a lot of Harry Potter themed things out to certain people because they, they that's what they liked. I kept some for myself. I love this one. I actually had that fabric. Hummingbird. Another piece. I mean, oops, hold on. Sewing needles. There's a ring. I got some M and M guys. I try to at least keep it all together, which is kind of hard when you move all the time. Needle case. Hermione. Harry. Dumbledore's army. Another Hermione. Hermione. Another Dumbledore's army. Rom Weasley. Oh my gosh. I love her to death. More. So this is what I have. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I've had ideas swarming around my head. I've had ideas about making like 10 inch blocks and then making these a border for it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do now, but I would like to get some of this done because this is really cool. So here's that. And then this one's actually one I just recently did a year and a half ago gonna probably crinkle and wrinkle because and I tried to finish it before I left to go on trail it did not work I just actually ended up making a bigger mess of it than I than I really wanted to but this is not my normal forte just FYI um, I do not I am not oh, please workers, don't yell at me don't get mad at me I am NOT a Tula Pink fan but I did this because a friend of mine was doing it, and I thought, how cool would it be? But I was I was working on Nebula. And I do believe I have 99.9% .9 of the blocks completed. So some of them are sewn. Some of them are not. Some of them are in various stages. As you can tell, like here's all my blocks. So I need to actually assemble her. Um, I can show you. I think I have all the blocks done. Or all the blocks in here. So I have these two done. They look really, really good too, mind you. I have them all done. I just have to now assemble the quilt. Is that blocks? One. Two, three, I'm missing block one. Huh? Block four. Block five. Block six. Block seven, which I actually kind of liked this block. Block eight, super hard on me, but I really enjoyed it. And block nine, I loved this green one, not so much this one. And I don't know where block one is. Block one just could have been like the whole. All right, here's block one. Here's them all actually. This is block one. And, I mean, it's going to look amazing when I finally get it put together, but I need that time. So, I can't guarantee it's going to be something that's going to happen like ASAP, but it is on my radar this year. I did the tough part. I already did the cutting and everything else. Now I just got to figure out what to do with it. And what's more interesting is there's a bag in the other room with all the scraps. So I need to figure out what to do with all them because I really don't want to put them to waste. Um, I don't think I have a photo of the bear claw, but maybe I do, hold on. Maybe it's in here somewhere. So this is a Judy Namar. It's called the Rocky Mountain Bear Claw. I'll get a photo of it so I can show you what it's supposed to look like. But this is in all pieces as well. Just gonna give you some advice. 
if and when you do a quilt and you've done it once before, refresh yourself with all the steps and all the rules. Here's the photo of it. I was actually trying to get this done for a friend of ours that requested a quilt, and I figured that this would be perfect for her. There's a story behind that, but that's besides the point. I found some of the most amazing fabrics for said quilt. I sewed it all up. I got towards the end of this quilt and realized that I messed it up. I sewed on the wrong lines. Refresh yourself with what you know or don't know. So I can show you what some of the pattern pieces look like. Here's some of the raw edges. I love this fabric, by the way. I'll take it out. And yes, when you're actually doing a quilt like this, they tell you to put it in bags. So you can do it in the sections that you need to do, and so it works. But here is just parts of it. And this is like the paper piecing in the back. This is probably some of the easiest quilting I've ever done. Unless you mess it up, and then you're just starting it all over again. So, refresh yourself before you mess up like me, okay? Don't just jump all in like I do. Don't do that. All right, I will be back with my next set of quilts. Okay, back for the next collection of what the hell is Carrie doing next? Anyway, no, I'm joking. So, one of the things that I was doing for a friend of mine, just, I never actually did finish this. This is a block of the month wall quilt designed by Ruth Whitmer by the sea. I did do some of these. This is the one I did finish. I really, really liked this a lot. This was actually a lot of fun, and the appliques were really cool. However, that's as far as I got with it. I really need to come back to it. But these blocks, I mean, I actually had a lot of fun with it. These blocks were really cool. And I loved doing that ocean theme feel to it. That was really, really neat. I picked out all the fabrics myself from my stash. The problem is now, I don't have a stash anymore, so I don't know how I'm going to work this or what I'm going to do with it, so it's probably going to go away for a while, which is okay. It's all good. I ain't getting finished in 2024. Let me see what else we got here. I'm going to actually have to show you this quilt. I got it as a gift leaving when I left for from the Quilt Guild in Alaska. And I need to put a border on it, bind it, quilt it. Um, story of my life. I see a trend here. It's beautiful, though. Um, all the jars on it are amazing. Um, and I love the fact that all the people that I've quilted with and did quilt shows with did it for me. And, um, and pretty much what they did, I'm going to show you some of the... Is each one of them picks their own stuff and, and does the jar and puts it together. And then they, they put it together. So... These are the little tidbits of Alaska. And I got the puffins, eagles, ducks, birds, all kinds of neat. I love it. So I absolutely love it and will keep it. And I need to quilt it and do all that. And remember the quilt blocks I was telling you about with the. There's some more. I have more. These ones are a little different, all different. I don't know if I got, I have no idea. So these are just some of the quilt blocks I think I've done. I did a small version of this one. I really like it actually. Maybe I can put a border and make it a baby quilt and give it to somebody. Sorry, I'm just throwing it at you. I don't know what I'll ever do with any of these. I may have been gifted these. See, look, there's more. I, want, I wish there was a way for me to just throw them all in one quilt. Oop, there's two of them. My dryer's going off. And go for it. I was probably just gifted these. But I hate throwing away someone's beautiful work. Sorry. Some of those. There's more. There's another one. Oh, that was a little one inside a big one. Oh, there's another one. I 
Like I said, some of these were gifted to me. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I'm not really a log cabin person, so that one's kind of... But you know what? Some of these look like a very similar pattern, and I could probably just throw them all together and make it work, and hopefully... So my first... Actually, that was the back of that one. Sorry about that. My first attempt at paper piecing prior to doing my placemats that are from a Judy Namar thing is this one. And I thought I did really well with it. I was so impressed with it and all the things. This fabric is the same fabric that I had his mom's um, bag made out of with his name on it, uniform bag. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I love it. And if I had more of that fabric, I would, I would, I would make more of it, but I do not. This was a baby quilt that was made eons ago for someone. I never finished it. So, put some borders on it, quilt it up, give it away. Yeah, maybe. Family arguments happen. Things just don't happen after that. Um, this next quilt, I'm going to show it right here. Um, it was supposed to be a Christmas gift, and then we moved and did a bunch of stuff, and then I couldn't find things, and it was a nightmare after that. So, I need to re-figure the size. Um, and then I need to quilt it, bind it, gift it. There's that one. This next one is the same thing. I need to do this exact same thing um, for that quilt, or for this quilt right here. I need to put a border on it, finish it up, bind it. And again, if you're not seeing the same theme here as I am, I need to fix it. It's very windy out here today in Eastern Tennessee. So another one, I actually did this one for my quilt group, and I also did this for um, the quilting BOM had um, some instructions as well. So I got gifted a ton of these blocks because I just thought they were cool. And here's one of them. And I just, oh, actually two of them. I think they're the most amazing, and they're going to make the cutest quilt. I just have to sew them together. So all I did was pick the white, and everybody else picked the most amazing color schemes. And I think this is such a neat idea. Here's one. Here's the other one. Look how bright these are. Aren't these amazing? I love these. And I have more to show you. I have this pink one. Oh. Pink and purples. I love it. And I love the fact that everybody's, it was just neat. Love, love, love. There's one more. I even have some left from the My Quilt Guild that I did, made and passed out. So I can make more of these. This one's a little bit different. What do you think? <laughs> Supposed to be whatever. I can probably fix that. And I think the last one. They're so neat. I can't actually wait to do these. I have been actually waiting to do these for a while. And they need to get done like ASAP. Okay, not ASAP, but you know what I mean. Another quilting BOM that should have been done ages and eons ago, but I messed it up, is it was a mystery quilt. And here's some of the blocks that go with it. I did mess this up. However, I didn't mess it up. And then my, my grandmother passed. And this was actually going to be her quilt as a comfort quilt. So here was one of the blocks. Um, I do have the rest of them pretty much sewn together, so I can show you where it's at. And what I need to do is fix, actually, no, hold on. I need to fix um, one block. Here's the other pieces of it. I need to fix one block. That one's block eight. There's another one. Um, I don't actually know where all the rest of them are, so I probably won't be showing you a picture. But um, it was the mystery block for 2019. I don't think I have any more. And this is where I got my ideas from. 
remember I was telling you, when you see something that's just really, really neat, different colors, different this is cool, um, you pick it up and you work with it. And that's exactly what I did. I did the um, the block and I added the peach color and a cream color. I added this to give it some difference. And it did, which was really nice. So I can't gift it. I don't know what I'll do with it when, I've, when it's complete. Um, another, I have to move some things around because I haven't finished this one yet either. However, I did finish her sister. Her sister is a big girl, but I had so much. Remember I was telling you about that fabric that I got way back when, right? A long time ago. Well, I went on this verge of like chaos, literally, and I started making these little line patches. And those little nine patches started going into strips like this. And those little strips turned into blocks like this. <laughs> and I have quite a few of them still left over. And I can show you what my large quilt looked like when I finished it. I still need to obviously work on some more pieces for this because I still have some left, but this is what the quilt looks like when it's finished. It came out of the Love of Quilting magazine from August of 2014. This is what the quilt looks like. Let's see, it's a big one. No, nope, just a little one. And this is kind of sort of what mine looks like too. It is stunning. I absolutely love this quilt. I don't know if I'll ever do it again, this quilt right here, and it's in the bucket, is going to be a lap quilt. It's going to be a distant relative. Here, I'll show you this one. It's a distant relative to the large quilt, which I have, which my children have argued over for quite a while now. So I would love to sew this thing up. I love this one, and I love the fact that there'll be two of them. Then maybe the kids won't fight over the other one so much. However, I know that's not the end of my quilts. Uh, I do have plans to start quilts. So plans. So I um, am working on collecting the rest of the North Carolina and South Carolina um, quilt shop hop that they did. Um, I also did the Tennessee quilt shop hop. I'm planning on doing all of their blocks. So will I get to that in, in March? I am not 100% sure. Um, so that's where my plans and probably next haul is going to come from. Um, I do, there's a couple things that I would like to, to at least work on. I would like to work on, I guess I should work on plans here. I'm trying to make this almost like my floss tube videos to keep myself accountable for everything that I need to do. And if you have quilty friends out there that would like to watch progress, by all means, I'm okay with the cheering section because God forbid I know I need it. Um, I would like to finish Tucker's Journey or at least get it. I need to get the backing set to send this out. Put it in a box, send it to Peggy because she already knows it's coming. I will probably not send this until we move. So no, I, if it's in a box ready to go, I'm okay with that. I just need to make sure that the backing has got all of its measurements all the way around so that she can put it on her um, quilting machine and then send it back and make sure I have a job to pay for that. Um, hopefully by the time I do an update for you, there's going to be a quilted table runner, maybe a quilted wall hanging since the quilter, quilting will probably be similar to the wall hanging. Mm. Oh, there is a puff blanket quilt that I did. Um, I need to just stitch that. I'll show you a picture of what it's going to look like and um, it needs to get sent out ASAP. That little girl is growing up faster than that quilt's going to ever do anything for her. So um, that was my first puff quilt ever. I love it. Now I have one set to do for Aviana as well. I've already cut out all of the um, fabric. I cut it out when I did the other one. In fact, Aviana couldn't even stay off that quilt, so she really, really wanted it. So hopefully I can get a quilt ready for her so that I can 
um, make her one as well because I would really like that. She absolutely loved that quilt. So, all right, with that being said, welcome to my first quilt tube. And I really hope to be to do more of these because I have so many interests and this is just another one of those amazing ones. So thank you so much for joining me and until next time, have a wonderful day.